okay? Okay, let's see. It's me, okay. So uh, Chatbase is uh, part of Google. Uh, we actually, I get to do a startup inside Google. So get to stay a CEO of a startup, it's my fifth time. Sold one to Google, sold one to ask.com. Uh, Chatbase does bot analytics and optimization. So, um, here we go. Well, while they, while they get the slides up, um, yeah, the, the goal of Chatbase is you give me a bot, I'll make it better. I'll give you it back improved. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about some common errors that come up in bots that uh, can be automatically fixed. Okay, so here we go. How to save time optimizing bots. Okay, so the year is 1997. And in this uh, nondescript building on the University of Michigan campus, AI researchers are hard at work building things, including chatbots. Um, I'm on a project with a few other researchers working on the digital library project. Um, we're trying to help teachers and, and students in middle school and high school answer science questions. So when is the next, when is the next time that the Haley's Comet is going to come by? as an example. So we're getting uh, type in information and we're trying to extract intent and, and meaning. Um, and so back then, there's no off the shelf NLP tools, there's no like uh, ecosystem of tools to help you build bots and, and we find it really hard. Like we actually, we build a pretty crappy bot. Um, and in the end we ended up just um, uh, pivoting. So we, we couldn't quite build a bot. Uh, but now, 20 years, sorry, 20 years later, um, uh, we're on the, the cusp of like bots becoming, uh, you know, much easier build and, and, a, and a thing, a mainstream thing. Um, but still, as many of you in this room might know, it's, uh, it's pretty hard to build a good one. So let me just uh, take a poll. How many people in this room have already built a bot? Okay, it looks like 65%. Um, and how many people in the next year uh, that haven't built a bot plan to build one? So pretty much the rest of you. Okay, so we're all building bots. Um, and, you know, luckily there's tools that we can use for uh, various things like NLP and, and analytics. Um, but still, like, uh, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it's hard to, like, do this thing because unlike websites and apps, it's so open-ended. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, you can receive any kind of input from the user and, your, and the expectations are sky high. You're expected to figure out what to do with it. Nonetheless, uh, according to Gartner, 21% of uh, CIOs at large companies are already building bots. And, um, and so it's, it's a thing. And, and by uh, 2021, over 20%, sorry, over 50% uh, of, of companies will spend more on bots than apps. So this is also according to Gardner. So there's this trend coming, and, and uh, that's why we're all here. We're, we're trying to get ahead of it. So one of um, so we actually at Chatbase uh, monitor over 50,000 bots a month. So we come in touch with a lot of bots. Uh, one of the more interesting ones is um, is Fitwell. They have uh, 1.3 million users of their app. Uh, and they're now introducing, introducing a bot, and, and the goal is to help you have a fitness coach, help you with your exercise routine. Um, and what they found was that it's easy while you're in dev and QA to like, figure out the edge cases and where the bot's falling in, falling in its face, but then as you launch to production, it becomes unmanageable to like, all the um, variations of, uh, in requests coming at you explode, and the types of errors that come up explode. And so how does like, a company, especially if you're like, a startup, how do you manage this explosion in, in like, mistakes that the bot makes, especially as we become successful? Um, actually, yeah, that's good. I'm saying um right there. So uh, common errors that we found are um errors. And, I, and that's what I'll talk about in the next uh, 10, 10 minutes or so. 
Uh, these are uh, unsupported, misunderstood, and missed requests. And I'll define each of these and give examples. But what we found working with bot developers at some of the largest brands and, and startups is that they um, often are working on fixing these things. So let's go through these so that it's clear what we're talking about. Actually, before that, uh, we found from our data that 12% of the time this comes up. And that's probably a little bit of a conservative estimate because uh, it's self-reported. But uh, imagine an app that crashes 12% of the time. You know, it would never re retain its users. And, and these errors in conversation are like a crash in an app. So you want to fix them, especially since they're pretty common. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's talk about the first one, unsupported request errors. Okay, so uh, these are, the user says something that you haven't thought of building yet, or you haven't gotten around to building yet. So this is functionality that's outside the scope of what your bot does today. This is a real example from one of our clients. So all these, this is a large retailer, and a lot of people are asking about refunds that they were expecting and didn't get. A very specific use case. And all the different ways that you know, it might be said. So, um, so today, yeah, you go through logs and try to find all these among thousands of messages and, and then maybe create an intent for it. So that's the work we do today. That's unsupported. And then misunderstood. So misunderstood requests. Um, who knows who this is? Mr. Bean, yeah. Um, OK, so yeah, he's misunderstood. Uh, so misunderstood requests are where, um, this is actually an example from another client. It's a bank in South Africa uh, that gives you investment advice. Uh, and so they had this issue when people were asking for, uh, for the definition of what a tax-free investment is. They wanted the definition. It would actually give them tax-free investment options. And so the intent was misunderstood. And so by detecting it and then, you know, and, and they had both intents, but they just like misclassified. So misunderstood is when you have, especially as you have more and more intents, it becomes more probable that you'll mis mislabel, uh, you know, a, a request. And so this actually just accelerates. The more intense you have, the more likely you are to misunderstand mis, uh, the user. And so that's another way that bot developers spend a lot of time, trying to find these misunderstood requests. These are actually like the most acute issues. Imagine a client saying one thing and the bot's like helping him with something else. It can be really frustrating. So important to fix. Okay, and the last category is Missed requests. Who's this guy? Messi. Um, yeah, so missed requests. Um, even the best soccer player in the world can miss, you know, miss the ball. Uh, missed requests are you have the intent, you actually built it, and you know a hundred ways that people might ask for it. But there's a hundred more ways that people are asking for this intent that today you don't understand. So you, you're like raising your hands, like the bot doesn't know what to do, even though you could have helped them. So an example, this is also a real example. Um, people wondering why their account is frozen or banned or blocked or locked or suspended or limit, limited view. All these different ways of saying the same thing. You have the intent and you just have to connect the dots. You already built it. So that's a missed uh, request. Okay, so those are the three types and and it's really time consuming. Like uh, we work with this one large retailer that has five business analysts. All they do is look through logs for these um issues from morning to night. You know, it sounds like a nightmare to me. Uh, and uh, they make a lot of mistakes from what I hear. Uh, and I'll talk more about that. Okay, so, so yeah, that's what happens today. You have people looking through logs for these um issues. Okay, so now what we've found is that machine learning can automate the fixing of um, issues. And um, 
Specifically, um, you can use um, clustering or unsupervised machine learning to find unsupported requests. So you know you find like a, a group of uh, statements that map to let's say listing status. So all the different ways. This is like um, how's this is this example is from Keller Williams, which is a large uh, retailer and uh, not retailer, uh, real estate company. So all the different ways that people ask for listing status, you could automatically draw a circle around it, and then as a PM, see how how often does it come up, and should I build that as the next feature? So that's unsupported. Uh, and then misunderstood and missed requests. Um, you can use supervised machine learning. So you can give me your existing variations or ways of saying things that you map to an intent. And I can train supervised machine learning and then find more things that you didn't detect in your logs. Uh, ways, you know, ways of saying the same thing. So let's look at this. So let's say for missed. Um, my listing is, you have a cluster there, but then people are asking for my homes, which could mean the same thing. And so I can find all these like, extra ways of, of uh, saying the same thing and, and then draw one big circle around. In this case, my homes, my classified, and my listings all meaning the same thing. Um, okay, long story short, uh, what we found is that in that example of the team that has five people looking through logs, they're not gonna go down to one person because our machine learning not only like automates all that work, but it's more reliable. Like they found that their human raters made mistakes more than the machine learning. Um, so in the case of unsupported, we suggest new intents, misunderstood and alternate intent and missed, you know, you're, you're, you're finding an existing intent. We also find that it helps to like zoom into these clusters and like look at specific examples like um, transcripts because I often can, can clarify when something comes up in conversation. So in the case of unsupported requests, you can decide when to add a button or introduce it into a conversation. Um, it helps the PM decide like how to introduce new features. Okay, so we. Uh, fortunate to be able to use uh, machine learning from Google Research. Uh, so we build on top of that to do some of this work. Um, we have, for the um, kind of issues I'm talking about, we have something called an early access program. So people interested uh, in that can uh, contact me uh, or, yeah, contact support at, well, anyway, I, I'll give it at the end. I have an email. Um, i trying to remember what it is. Um, chatbase-support at google.com. But anyway, we, we can get you guys enrolled. Um, and the way it looks, I don't know if you can see this, but um, this is how it looks in the product. So if, if you have all these like not handled issues, we would suggest intents uh, so that the top five are like missed requests and we suggest intents. Bottom one is an example of like a misunderstood request where you have an intent and we're like, we're not sure that's the right one. You know, the user said, you know, help me find a store and you thought it was a product search intent. So anyway, you can see, this is actually what it might look like. Um, Chatbase also helps you with your analytics, uh, various like metrics, like uh, growth and churn metrics and also help you, helps you visualize what people actually do in your bot and what are the paths they follow, where do they drop off. This is like all your sessions visualized. Um, so we go beyond just like the um, issues and, and help you with your uh, metrics. Okay, that's all I had. Um, really appreciate your time and happy to talk with you know, anyone that's interested in this offline. Thank you.